Do you have herpes? Could you walk around in a t-shirt that said herpes positive? Linda Hustler is here to change all of that. Season one, episode 10. Linda tells us what it is to really live unashamed of your secret story and what it feels like to become unashamed. Take a listen. Hi, Linda. Hi, Anita. <laughs> How are you this beautiful Monday morning, I'm Motivational here. Monday? I am great. How are you? How is California? California is wonderful. California is always wonderful. I know. You have an opportunity to come again because I'm sure you've been here before, jet setting ladies like you. But if you have a chance to come again, we'll we'll have to meet up. Okay. We will. You're um in the southern california part right i am, I am in anaheim california yes and you land yes and you yes. have been very very busy with the national herpes alliance no the african-american herpes alliance i am very specific about who my audience is huh? especially because african-american women are three times likelier to have the disease than white women and our rates of transmission are higher than any other race. Now, it's a pandemic out here and no one's talking about it. Do you think it's because of a lack of communication or a lack of knowledge? Both, especially in our community. The African-American community, as you know, being in African-American women, we, we have a lot of secrets. We um, have a tendency to, to give everything to Jesus but we don't pray and ask Jesus to lead us to a good therapist. And so we keep secrets hidden, keep them buried. We stay stuck in the shadows. We whisper, but we never really get to the source of anything. So we never really result in anything. So the, how is, that, how is the African-American different from the national? Like for instance, is it a national organization or is it uh, dispersed throughout the nation through local chapters? Here, here's the thing, and this is really interesting. I launched June 5th of 2016. Mm -hmm. That was uh, my birthday present to myself as a herpes positive African-American woman who was tired of being in the shadows and was ready to step out it will be a nationwide organization but like i said i am at the preliminary stages two months in two months and three days in and i'm i'm gaining traction and i want to create a movement because we as a people not continue to be in a chokehold when it comes to sex sexuality stds We've got a lot of work to do, and we're lagging behind HIV, we're lagging behind autism, we're lagging behind Alzheimer's. All of these other groups have movements, walks, runs, bicycle rides, organizations, celebrity spokespeople. We've met, we have nothing, but we have millions of people with herpes worldwide. It's the second most globally contracted virus worldwide. And no one's talking about it. Wow. Yes, ma'am. True facts, true facts. So how are you how are you rolling out? What I did was I created a website, right? The herpesalliance.com and I have lots of information. I have contact pages. There's a lot of people who would love to step out of the shadows if they knew how. If they knew someone who would take their hand and leave the way so when they come to my site they can fill out a contact form i have a private facebook group i have a program in the beginning that helps rebuild self-esteem and help people reclaim their power i am 
people like you who are interviewing me and allowing me to have this platform and this forum. You know, it takes work, but like anything, you know, I'm, I'm up for the challenge. And I do know that there are some more gladiators and trailblazers out there just like me, just looking for someone like me to show them the way. So now, have you been able to make any of those connections to, to, to solidify exactly what your next step is going to be? Because I know you're doing, right now you're doing a lot of outreach. Yes. Your presence on social media is just exploding. It is blowing up everybody's, it's in conversation, though it's not yes. personal conversation. So have you seen right. what Linda's doing? What is that Linda's doing? And I said, well, let me interview Linda and find out what that is Linda is doing. So I know that on social media, everything is blowing up. But taking it from social media to actually providing services to the individual, how is that rolling out? Yeah. Okay, so basically for me, what I have found, um, having herpes myself, I was contracted in 2003, I didn't tell my mom or anyone until March of 2016, which which made me realize just how deep and personal this is. So for me, the, the challenge is going to be, how do I get people to talk about it? And I realized that I have to talk about it first. So when you say, how am I rolling this out? I'm rolling it out as we speak by expressing my desire to encourage others to step out of the shadows, by writing my book, Bold, Brave, and Blessed with Herpes, Releasing the Shackles of Shame, which will be uh, available within the next couple of weeks, by going to the Girl Go Be Great conference in Atlanta, Georgia, coming up on 9th 10th. And having my book available, speaking to women. And here's the thing, my, my journey is really about shame, overcoming shame. My shame came from herpes, but it's still under the umbrella of shame. So I can speak to anyone because we've all had shame. Mine was herpes, someone else may be rape, molestation, alcoholism, porn addiction. Uh, drug addiction, uh, kleptomania, you see what I mean? Yeah. So umbrella is shame. My shame was herpes. So getting out there and just going to lots of different conferences, um, as I continue to speak, people will continue to hear me and people will be empowered and inspired and motivated to join me. I am creating a movement. That's what I'm really doing. And how it unrolls, how it unfurls, we'll see. But the first step is you gotta, you gotta, you gotta step out. Like Magic Johnson did with HIV, he didn't really know how everything was gonna unfurl, but he knew that to get the ball started, he had to say something. It had, it, the movement has to have a voice. The movement has to have a voice. I'm a voice to the voice. I'm a voice to those who are screaming in silence. Lots of people are screaming in silence about lots of different things. And so, like that song, if you can see it, you can be it. As people see me standing up, they'll realize, wow, that's not that hard to do. do have you seen that uh, lady, that Linda Husser lady, the herpes lady, whatever they want to call me, I call myself the shame annihilator oh. because I want to obliterate shame. I want to you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with these guns, but I yeah, just have to use it. I want to take my AK-47 and blow shame to smithereens. That's what I want to do. When you told your family yes. that you didn't tell your mom until March of 2016, right? how did that, what was the reaction? How has the relationship been since then? Mm. Well, it was interesting because, <clears throat> excuse me, I think in one sense my mom was um, amazed that I could keep that from her for so long because we're the best of friends. But then she said something pretty profound. She said, 
if it was that hard for you to tell me, this disease is really powerful. And she's right. And that's why I know that the only way I'm going to really create this movement is I have to get in front of people and let them see who this lady is who's taken this disease that has crushed and crippled so many spiritually and emotionally. And yet she was able to find a way to tell her story in front of two, three, five hundred, six hundred, a thousand people. That's how the movement starts, by people seeing that it's possible. And I have a story to tell, and I, I will tell my story. In Atlanta, I'm going to tell my story. I'm going to bring the house down. And like I said, this isn't just about herpes. It's about shame and, and how we aren't living up to our purpose, our passions, or our potential because of the shackles of shame and how it's so unconscious. We, we don't do a lot of things because of the residual effects of shame that we can't even see that beat up our self-esteem, you know? So uh, tell me more about your book. What, what led you to read the book? You've already given us the title, but just walk us through just a little bit of the content from chapter to chapter. What can we expect okay, to learn? Well, what I do is I give a, I feel like I didn't want to just go into, hi, my name is Linda Husser and I have herpes. So I gave a overview of who Linda is. So I did a little bit of my background, my bio, so that people get a sense of where I come from. You know, I had dysfunction in my family like so many others. I um, had some other personal issues happen to me that I disclose in the book because I don't want people to think that I was this perfect person who just happened to have herpes and now she's overcome. And I teach people how to, first of all, deal with the fact that they have herpes or whatever their issue. My book, like I said, is about my, my journey with herpes, but that herpes didn't have me. And it's so important to make that distinction. And once we can make that distinction, then the, the healing can begin. That it's important to just own the fact that acknowledge, you know, shame to me is shout out your secrets, heal your hurts, acknowledge your anger, master your fears, and evolve emotionally. You have to be able to go through all five of those steps before you can begin the journey to healing. What, what would you say that carrying that secret and the shame that was attached to it, how did it hamper you? In uh, well, it, uh, I was celibate for many years, so it hampered my ability to have a healthy and whole relationship. It hampered my ability to live fully and um, transparently and authentically. Like I said, when we have secrets, we don't think they affect us because people um, can't see what we're going through. But that mask that we put on that uh, prevents people from seeing who we really are and we think it uh, protects us from the glares and stares of those who may judge us, but it also dims our light and doesn't allow our light to shine like that song. This the light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And so when you wear a mask, you know, nothing's coming in and nothing's going out. And so it, 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 it took away my ability to love. Um, and, and I feel that God made man for woman and woman for man. So for many years, I did not, I did not enjoy that part of my life. Um, I didn't get any kisses under the mistletoe because you know I wasn't dating. I uh, New Year's Eve was spent either with girlfriends or with family, not with the loved one, uh, a male, because I just cut myself off from that because I, I just didn't want to have that conversation. And I didn't want to only 
have relationships with people with herpes. They've got herpes dating sites out there, but I still felt like I'm hiding. I'm living as a second class citizen in an underground society, basically perpetuating the stigma that we say we don't like. As if something is wrong with you, you have to be in a subset versus being in the mainstream. Yes, yes. And so I, um, it, it hampered me socially, um, emotionally, physically. You know, I was not um, in a healthy uh, sexual relationship with anyone. So I cut myself off from a lot of, a lot of uh, things. And, and that's where the stepping out of the shadows comes from. That's where the coming clean comes from. That's where the book comes from, the Facebook page, the website, because like President Obama famously said, if it's to be, it's up to me and I have to be the change I want to see. Because I can tell you what you give us now is very vibrant. Mm -hmm. Your your eyes shine, your skin glows, yes. everything about you now says, I am it. I don't have it. Yes. Like, like some people say, you know, you have, you have something special. When you yes. glow at us and we see all of the posts that you put out into social media, it's more of the shine is me. Yes. Versus yes. I have the shine. I was like, look at this, look at all the <laughs> It really, it really looks great on you. And it really looks like you are fulfilling your purpose. Yes. And that that's yeah. where your joy and your happiness is coming from. Yeah. That you know what you're doing right now is actually yeah. what God meant for you to do in this space and time. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And freedom feels good. I'm free. Like, I totally understand freedom. You know, I feel like everyone should feel this way, regardless of what they're going through. If you're in a domestic uh, violence situation, get free. If you are um, in a chokehold emotionally because of molestation, get free. If you are, um, you know, in bondage for whatever reason, get free because you're not really alive. Until you're free, you're existing, but you're not living. And as I get free and encourage other people to get free, and they encourage other people to be free, then the world will really be a better place because at the end of the day, all of this chaos and confusion that's going on in the world, if we were to be able to interview each person, it's something going on that has them in bondage and they don't know how to express themselves. So they're expressing themselves the best way they know how, even if it's shooting up somebody or, um, you know, just, all this craziness really comes from bondage, chaos, confusion, um, shame, fear, anger. All of this that's going on is a is a direct correlation to those emotions. That's why I say you have to evolve emotionally and give yourself permission to evolve. So many people are um, they become comfortable in their misery like good morning heartache they wouldn't know what to do if they didn't wake up to their misery every day and that's pretty sad but true so in addition to the conference that you have coming up in atlanta and what exactly is that it's the girl go be great conference put on by lori pelzer and there is um different speakers there mine i'm part of the wellness stage and uh just lots of inspiration, motivation, transformation going on. And she found me through um, probably some posting online. So the word is getting out. I'm very excited. And uh, as as people see this as well, now that you know what I'm up to, and it's going to be a chain, a chain reaction. It really is. I am not as... Uh, organized as you will as i possibly could be with my message but i do know with social media thank god for social media thank god for people like you um, that the word will get out it's just a matter of time well and in atlanta some great things will happen 
I just feel it in my bones. Who knows? Steve Harvey's people, somebody might be there. And before you know it, Anita, I'll be on the Steve Harvey show. Well, when you get there, don't forget the little people. No, oh, not at all, because I will still be one of the little people. Trust me, I will be one of the little people who just happen to be at the right place at the right time and, and have an opportunity to be on the show. Trust and believe. <laughs> Will Linda be providing any coaching? Yes, I have a program on my uh, website and it's called In the Beginning. And it is for those who have herpes. It's herpes specific. And uh, it's about, um, first of all, people would always ask me, Linda, how did you... Um, how are you able to get the courage to step out and share your herpes diagnosis? And I have to say, it was the self-development work that I did. And I decided that I would come up with the program in the beginning because in the beginning, there was life. So it's important that those who have herpes realize there is life. You, you know, we don't have to stay this way. And it, um, it's about positive affirmations, uh, sentence stems, mirror work, journaling, um, uh, what's that? Oh my gosh, I'm going on blank right now. Um, what's the, the board. Of, what's the name of your website? Um, Vision Board. It is African American Herpes Alliance.com. And if someone wanted to get in touch with Linda, Xavier, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, what are yes. the handles? My handles is African American Herpes Alliance uh, on Twitter. My handle on Facebook is Linda Susan Husser. The Facebook page for the Alliance is African American Herpes Alliance. Uh, Instagram, African American Herpes Alliance. Everything is pretty much African American Excellent. Herpes every, Alliance. On every platform, though. Cause, yes. Because some of us are, we're trying to master, say, one or two. You just named, yes. like, five. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, you know what? Um, I belong to a lot of Facebook groups, and uh, I have a virtual assistant. I have okay. someone helping me. <laughs> so she, um, I'm going to just shout her out. Joanne Meekins is a beast <laughs> when it comes to... This social media game, the okay. social media thing. She got my website up. She, yeah. um, she made everything pop. So when they uh, fill out the assessment form, it goes to them. It comes back. They get their five uh, five ways to uh, empower themselves. Gifts on the website. She made it happen. If you have not visited my website, please do. Please do. So I'm excited. Thank you so much for um, having me on. See, these, these are the things that just keep happening to me. You know, I look up and someone wants to interview me and this is great. So this is part of the movement. Thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for being agreeable to be interviewed and then sent out to all of my friends and posted on all of my social media. Because this, it is a very, very important subject. It is an epidemic in our community and it's something that we need to have begin to talk about more. Yes, we do, we do. Especially as African-American women, because we have it at rates, it's astronomical. Um, it's astronomical, the rates that we have it in. It really is. And the fact that, you know, people don't even realize that herpes and cold sores, I mean, cold sores and fever blisters are herpes. I have a little card. Um, I'm a hairstylist by trade and I made up um, my business card it's like a little book and the front part is my information the inside has some statistics the other side talks about myths of herpes and the back asks um, people to join me so it's a little mini brochure and so many of my clients are like Linda what do you mean um, cold sores are herpes I said it's herpes simplex virus one and herpes simplex virus two is genital herpes. I said there's two types and they're just absolutely blown away. So the fact that so many people don't realize that fever blisters and cold sores are herpes because they glamorized it so that you can go get some Abreva 
which is an over-the-counter like lip balm that's for twenty dollars for a little tube. So big farm is making big money, not telling people that cold sores and fever blisters are herpes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> there is there is a lot of money in pharmaceuticals. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So one of the reasons why I, I am um, so adamant about getting this movement started is because it's all about the research. If you look at the leaps and bounds that HIV has made, that hep C, they now have a, which is also a virus, they have a cure for that, it's very expensive, is because of the research, because of the noise that's being made. So I want to get out there and really make noise about herpes because the squeaky wheel gets the oil. If we are content to just pop a pill and be on that pill forever, then Big Pharma continues to make the pill. You've got to get out there and march and walk and run and bicycle ride and raise funds for the so that the research, this is also about the research. HIV is everywhere. Walks, runs, their color is red. They've got celebrity spokespeople, they have concerts. We're, I want to do the same for those of us who have herpes because it's all about the research. If you keep quiet, they keep quiet. You got to raise the roof on this herpes situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Linda, for sharing your time with me this morning. I know it is very early. That's okay. The early bird catches the worm, no, no doubt. I expect to be up even earlier as the movement progresses. You know, I, I won't be able to be in the bed sleeping. I'll be on planes flying here, there, and everywhere. It's all good. It's perfect practice for me. I love it. <laughs> I love your energy. Yes, ma'am. I'm serious about this. You you have to see it, right? That's what vision boards are all about. I have vision boards of me on the stage with thousands of people surrounding me. Like uh, President Obama, Obama, as you can see, is one of my favorites, was when he went over there to Germany. And remember all those people? It was all those hundreds of thousands of people. I have visions like that. When I dream, I dream big. Yes. So that's what I see in my future and in my life. All right, Linda. Thank you. And I'm sure after the book comes out, I'll try and catch up you again. Maybe, okay. just, maybe just to get like a five or a 10 minute catch up with the... Um, okay. I'm sure it'll be a bestseller. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It's a short read. Um, I went with the short read because I felt like I wanted to get my message out. And so this is volume one, and then I'll follow up with volume two. And, and the title again? Bold, Brave, and Blessed. Ooh, make sure you see the necklace. Bold, Brave, and Blessed with Herpes, Releasing the Shackles of Shame. That's it. Linda and I would love to get your feedback. Is there anything in your life that you're hiding behind? Is there anything you would like to just tell everybody and finally get it over with? Leave your comments, questions in the section below and consider joining my email list to get a heads up on what episodes are next. You may get to vote on what interview is next or you may win the next t-shirt over at thatanitalive.com. Be blessed.